Hi and uh, welcome to another part of the series uh, building uh, land string manipulation by building a cipher. So uh, in this video we will proceed from step number 41 all through to 50 and on these 10 steps our main focus will be to get to learn more about comparison operators, a recap of conditional statements, assignment operators, modular operator and an introduction to user defined functions which is an addition to what we had learned earlier, which is the predefined functions that are within the Python programming language itself. So with that said, let's get started with step number 41. Comparison operators allow you to compare two objects based on their values. You can use a comparison operator by placing it between the objects you want to compare. They return a boolean value, which is either true or false. Now, depending on the truthness of the expression, you are probably going to get either a true or a false value. And uh, in Python, these are the comparison operators that we have. We have the equal, not equal, greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, less than or equal to. Now, and uh, for the task that you are required to perform for step number 41 is at the beginning of your for loop body, print the result of comparing char with an empty space. Use the equality operator equal to for this particular task. So uh, what you are required here to do is like uh, head over to our for loop statement and at the beginning of it, just above the index variable, we need to declare or add a print statement that compares the char variable with the empty string. So for that, we need to add the print function first add the parentheses and inside here we add the char to equal sign to represent equal to and add an empty string and remember so uh let's check our code and uh, hopefully everything works out correctly and uh, it does so with that we can proceed to the next step that is challenge number 42 and uh, challenge number 42 says, currently spaces get encrypted as C. To maintain the original spacing in the plain message, you will require a conditional if statement. This is composed of if keyword, a condition, and a colon. This here is a syntax of an if statement, how it looks like. In the example above, the condition of if statement is x not equal to 0. The code prints x. If this statement is true, inside the if statement body run, runs only when the conditional evaluates to true. And if it doesn't, then we'll need to do an introduction of an else statement, which we are going to look later on in these coming steps. So the task for this particular step, at the top of your for loop, rep replace print char is equals to an empty string with an if statement. The condition of this if statement should evaluate to true if char is an empty space and false if otherwise. Inside the if body, print the string space exclamation mark and uh, remember to add the identification. So uh, what this uh, particular step requires us to do, first we need to get rid of this one and do an introduction of an if statement that checks if char is equal to an empty space and if it is then we need to print the space followed by the exclamation mark so right now we have done our replacement of the print char is equal to an empty string first we need to the, introduce the if statement and inside the if statement remember we are following this syntax that we had here we need to check if char is equal to an empty string uh -huh. With an if statement, the condition of this if statement should evaluate true if char is an empty space. So with that, we can proceed to saying if char is equal, remember, two equal signs to represent equal to an empty string, add a colon. Then remember identification, what are we going to do? We are going to print the space. followed by the exclamation mark. And with this, let's go ahead and check our steps to make sure it is correct, and it is. So let's proceed to the next challenge. Now, instead of printing the string that we had printed, which is space followed by the exclamation mark, 
Use additional assignment operator to add the space currently stored in char to the current value of encrypted text. So what this step requires us to do is we need to get rid of this print statement and instead of using the print statement we need to make use of the addition assignment operator. Earlier on remember when we are looking at the assignment operators we had a sign that had a plus followed by an equal sign. So that is the addition assignment operator and this step requires us to add the addition assignment operator uh, to the that is which is stored in the encrypted underscore text and add it to the one that we have added at the moment which is stored at char. So for this we need to get this text here which is encrypted underscore text which is our variable name we are declared up here. And in addition to this we need to use the addition assignment operator and add the one that we have declared now which is char. So with that written let's proceed to check if our code passes correctly. So let's check it and it does. So let's proceed to the next challenge which is step number 44. Yeah, so in step number 44, uh, a conditional statement can also have an else clause. This clause can be added to the end of the if statement to execute alternative code if the condition of an if statement is false. So an introduction of an if statement evaluates only if what we had passed in the first condition is false, meaning then we need to print what is in the second statement. So as you can see from the output, when you loop the iteration rich space, a space is added to the encrypted string. Then the code outside the if block executes and a C is added to the encrypted string. To fix it, add an else clause after encrypted underscore text plus char and identify the subsequent lines of code except for the print call. So uh, this step requires us to come down here, add an else statement to the if block Add an L statement. Remember to add the colons and ident all the other characters that follow except for the print statement. So we are going to highlight these and we are going to press tab to do the identification. And uh, that should work the wonders. And uh, let's check our code to make sure everything passes correctly. And it does. So with that, let's proceed to the next step. So step number 45, to, uh, try to assign the string hello Zyra to your text variable and see what happens to the console. So remember at the beginning of this challenge, we declared the variable text and assigned it hello world. So what you are required to do now is get rid of the world part of the string and replace it with Zyra. So that's what this step requires us to do. And if you pay close attention to the console, you can see that we have some changes and we are only able to see the hello string being printed in the console. Well, this will be well explained in the coming step. So for now, let's just confirm if what we have done is correct before proceeding to the next step. And it is. So uh, remember I said we will be explaining why the text, the other part of the string was replaced and why we were not able to see the character that was shown there. So basically the main reason behind is that is that when the loop reaches the letter Z, which is the last letter in the alphabet, the sum of index plus shift exceeds the length of the string alphabet, which is 26 by default. Now in this case, to be able to solve this particular issue, we need to do an introduction of the modular operator, which can be used to return the remainder of a division between two numbers. And um, that's where we do the introduction of the modular whereby we'll take the addition of the index plus the shift. Remember index is uh, what the, we had declared uh, earlier on, which is the character that we are trying to fetch from the alphabet which we had declared, adding it to 3 and getting the value being printed as the result of the in the console. So uh, in order for us to fix the issue that we had gotten earlier, we need to take the value of index plus shift and uh, do, it, do a division of it by 26. So uh, that's what this step requires us to do. So we need to surround our index plus shift into curly braces. 
remember pay close attention it's the curly braces and it's the bracket sorry it's the parentheses and not the curly braces and add a modular 26 meaning divide it by 26 and give us the remaining value so let's check our code to make sure that everything passes correctly and it does so let's proceed to the next step which is step number 47 step number 47 if you wish to incorporate additional characters into the alphabet string such as digits or special characters you will find it necessary to manually modify the right operand of the modular operation so in this case replace 26 with length alphabet to avoid this issue so uh, we need to replace 26 with this value that you have been given here so for that uh, it's, let's copy this and uh, head over to our 26 and uh, replace it by pasting in the value that we have been given and uh, let's check our code before proceeding to the next step step number 48 next modify your print call to print encrypted text encrypted text and put it outside the for loop so that the encrypted string is printed one time so we need to modify this print statement here and put it outside the for loop by removing the identification that we currently have and bring it back to the beginning of our lines so and uh, for this we need to get rid of this first part of the string of the print function and uh, yes and uh, this should begin with a single quote and as you can see we have some changes in our console where we only print the encrypted text and not the format that we had earlier on so let's proceed to the next challenge step number 49 right before the print call add another one and pass plain text is equals to text as the argument to print use the same identification so slightly above the print statement that we have just modified let's add another print statement and inside the print statement we are going to pass in this text that has been highlighted here and uh, as you can see in the console you also get plain text as hello zaira so the plain text is the text that we declared at the beginning of our code and the encrypted text is this text that we have here which is the alphabet which is um, alphabet plus the new index which is the addition of index plus shift uh, modular the length of the alphabet so let's check our code to make sure it passes and it does let's proceed to step number 50 and yeah this is where we do the introduction of user defined functions whereby we say a function is essentially a reusable block of code you have already made some built-in functions such as the print find and length but you can also define custom functions like define function name followed by the code this is the syntax of user defined functions a function declaration starts with the def keyword followed by the function name a valid variable name and a pair of parentheses the declaration ends with a colon as you can see here right after your shift variable declare a function called caesar and ident all the following lines to give your new function a body so this is what this step requires us to do uh, right after this uh, this is the function that you have just added uh, if you can remember what we had in our initial step uh, we add the alphabet and all the other things are uh, encrypted from the beginning of the line but uh, we needed them to be added as the body of the function so for that we declare the def keyword added the function name the parentheses a colon and identified the rest of the code and for that to be sure that everything works correctly let's check our code to be sure of that and it does so with that that marks the end of this video that is step number 41 all through 50 see you in the next one where we go through step 51 all through 60